Alright, I'm Aaron Olinger, and I'm going to be teaching you about how to use data selection and domains in Python slash orange. But first, it'll be kind of useful if you know what they do. Um, if you've ever used the data select widget in orange, we're basically about to do the same thing. Uh, sometimes you get data sets with information that, quite frankly, you don't care about. Uh, let's look at this, for instance. Actually, this is the wrong one. Hmm. Uh, Okay, this is the right one. Uh, look at this data set. This data set has basically the voting preferences of a bunch of different people. Some hundred, I think it's like 200, 200, 300, 300, 300-ish. Um, so, do do. It has uh, these things up here called attributes. And the attributes just tell you different things about each person. Um, but sometimes you don't care about all the attributes. Like, say, I don't care about adoption of budget resolution for these things, but I do care about uh, immigration and crime is on here somewhere, crime, and duty-free exports. So how would I go about making just a data set with those attributes and nothing else? Well, that's exactly what we're here to do. Um, well, of course, if you wanted to do that, you could use the widget, but if you wanted to do it in Python, then you have to use the orange functions. Uh, to start, let's look at this function that I made. This function, this func this function here, uh, report attributes. Is, uh, actually, I didn't make it. Sorry, I modified it to make it more readable. But it is in the orange examples. Uh, so what this does basically is it takes your data set um, right here and also a header, uh, or you can not have a header, and it prints your class variable, if there is one, and um, prints your header if you decide to make one, but the most important bit is that for every attribute, it prints out a number, the index of the attribute, and then the attribute. Uh, so basically, we'll be using this as a sort of checker thing to see what these uh, what these functions are actually doing to the attributes of our data sets. So let's run this. Oh, that's unfortunate. Dataset dot. One moment. So apparently at some point before this presentation, I accidentally hit the period thing. Anyway, now it's fixed. And now we shall run this. All right, so here is all of the basic attributes. Um, it starts at zero because in programming we have indexes that start at zero instead of one because we're just cool like that. Um, so let's actually do something to these attributes. Um, data two or d, sorry, d one, as you can see, takes this function data dot select and passes an argument range five. And range 5 is basically just a list um, of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so what does that do? Um, it gives you a list of the first five attributes. With Of course, it starts at 0 and ends at 4, because programmers are all nifty like that. Um, and it says no class, because it doesn't know how to find the class. Uh, and yeah, so you can do it by index. Select um, attributes by index. You can also select attributes by name. So if I want physician fee freeze and crime and whatever the fifth index is, which is uh, religious groups and schools, then oh, poof, I have them right here. Now we'll move to something a bit more complicated. Domains uh, are hmm, domains modify the actual data set. Well, they don't modify the data set. They make li a little subcategory in the data set of what you actually want and uh, to display. So, uh, to make this a bit more clear, um, basically, I'm making a domain that has the seventh index crime and duty-free exports in its list of attributes. And I'm about to run out of video time because this thing only lets me record for five minutes. So on to part two. Part two. As I was saying, you get the seventh index, crime, and duty-free exports. Or at least I should. So let's press enter and look at that. Hmm, this is strange. 
Um, we have one and two, but what happened to the third one? Which is actually two. Um, it became this class variable, because in this function, what it does is it actually takes the last item in this list and turns it into your class variable. So domain thinks that this thing has become our class variable. To stop it from doing that, we can add a second argument, false, because this actually, this takes two arguments, but it defaults the second to true, or one, I mean, it's the same thing. Um, so if we say this one is false, then it shouldn't do that anymore. And look, it's not doing that anymore. It just says no class and second, well, that's my header. But um, uh, yes, you, now you have all three of them. If you actually want an accurate one with the class variable at the class as the class variable, then you can do this and say, make the last argument, whatever your data set is, dot domain, dot class variable. And you don't actually need to set the second argument to true because it will default to true. But you can do it if you want to, because whatever. Um, and look at that. Now we have the class variable party, which is actually the real class variable, and the three um, attributes that we care about, apparently. All right. So that is basically what domains do. Let's look at... Oh, come on. There we go. Let's look at a implementation. Uh, for all you non-programmers, all these, like, th this raw input stuff is just so, like when I've been pressing enter, um, so that I don't just get a giant wall of code, or not code, of text. Um, so, filtering by class. Right here, I set this um, class dot this variable to a data dot select party republican. Uh, that's another thing you can do. If you want to just select by your class variable, you can set like uh, whatever the, the class variable is equal to whatever you want the class variable to be. So for this, it'll just give me the republicans, and for this, it'll just give me the democrats uh, data. The attributes will be the same for both of them though. Um, so right here, show data. Uh, this is a function I created, and it will basically show you all the data. It takes a data set, a header, which is just text, and a stopping point. Um, and what it does, it'll print the header so you know what in the world is going on. And if it doesn't, it'll just print whatever the data set is called, which is basically gibberish. Um, and the, if you set a stop value, then it'll stop after so many of those data points. Because if you look back here, there are like 300 of them. And I don't want 300 of them printed out because th th it'll just be a, a wall of, of, of data and that won't be very pretty. So we'll just do like the first 20. But you can do all of them. And for practical purposes, you probably want to do all of them. Uh, so let's do that. This will first do the one for the grand old party of the Republicans. Oops. That's not what I want. There we go. Click here. Now press enter. And look at that. It does the first 10 for the Republicans. Um, yeah, it doesn't show the attributes, but since I haven't modified the attributes at all, they're in the same order as they are up here. Uh, you could do another thing where you... Actually, you can modify the attributes of this now. I could um, uh, take these and modify them, just like how I've been doing up here. Uh, but for class Democrats, you do the same thing. I set this variable to 20, so now it's displaying 20. And that's essentially how you can filter data sets in Python.